Aloha! I hope you've had a wonderful week. Today the lesson is on dot painting. Now, I know that some of you are probably thinking, I don't have any paint at home. That's okay because at the end of this video there are going to be a couple of examples that use markers, colored pencils, you can use pens, pencils, crayons, anything that you have at home. This is a technique that has been used by so many artists in so many different ways. But let's get started. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, to start with dot painting, we need a paper. And I have covered my space. I should make a note of that. If you are messy, you probably want to cover up. I used what materials I had at home, so I happen to have a plastic plate that I can wash paint off and use it again. I want a pencil. Like I said, these are pretty handy, aren't they? Handy dandy pencils. I have water just in case I decide to use a paintbrush for my project, but if you have Q-tips at home, these are perfect. You can also use the end of a pencil for this project. You can use your finger. There are a lot of options. All you want is something that can create a dot. I also have some paint, this type of paint. Um, I just picked this prior to all of this, and so I just have it, happen to have it home for my boys to use. First thing I want to do is I want to create my design, okay? My design, I want to draw something that I enjoy and like to paint. I'm gonna start with, ooh, I think I'm gonna do a, a flower. I love doing flowers, my students know that. So I'm gonna draw my flower design. It's okay if I go off my paper, no big deal. I am going to include a few leaves. This is gonna look similar to one of my examples. Okay, from there, now I just have to have a plan and enjoy my painting. So I could use my brush, and the one thing I want you to remember, if you use a brush, you just wanna make a little circle. So you just want it to be up and down and dot. Okay, I can use my pencil, the end, up and down and dot. So the technique is that whatever you use should be straight up and down. I'm going to use Q-tips. And what's really cool about having Q-tips with two ends is I can put two different colors. I don't have to wash them at all and when I'm done I throw them away. So I'm going to start with my red. I don't even have to dip my Q-tip all the way in. So all I did was dip a little bit at the tip. Dip at the tip. Now I choose where to begin and I want my dots. They do not have to be perfect, by the way. Dip again. So I've gotten six dots in a row before I had to dip. You want a little bit of space between them. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's a technique that you can develop. I always outline, so I go around my edge. all the way around. My first exposure to dot painting was when I was learning about Aboriginal art from Australia. So those of you who are my students and you've been in my class before, you know that art that was done in caves, that it started out with learning about, ooh, pigment works, making their own pigment. They started by putting paint on their hands and they would put paint on the wall or put paint in their mouth and then spray it on their hands. Eventually they started depicting other things that were really important to them to that they wanted to preserve. Okay, I've gone one around. I can do it again and do my next row. I try to get in between my dots, but you know what? If I can't, that's okay. I'm gonna get a little bit creative here because I wanna do another color Aboriginal art. In Australia, they have found dot paintings all over walls, but they've also found it on bark. So at one point, they changed up their technique and started putting it on bark from trees, okay, using the same types of pigment that they use. Okay, I've gone around twice. Now, if I want to, I can switch over to another color. So all I did was turn my uh, Q-tip over and now I'm going to start dipping in my other color. So they would choose objects that they loved 
or that were important to them, such as their food source, like animals, or they would use secret symbols that were known only to members of their society, and they would create paintings that would tell stories that had meaning only to the people from their own tribes and their own land. So you and I, unless we were told what these symbols meant, we wouldn't understand. They would do this type of painting. They would do dot painting when they would create their pictures. And part of it was to hide those symbols. So unless you knew what you were looking for, you had no idea they were there. They would also do animal paintings and they would do dots just like this. So dot painting is just a fun way to create art. It does not take that much in the way of material, but it can take a lot of time. It takes patience. You have to think about what you want to do. It does not have to be perfect. I know I've put some spots and dots in places that maybe originally I would not have put them there, and that is okay. If you look at Aboriginal art, if you have a, an opportunity and a chance to look those up, you can learn all about the different animals that they eat or that are important to them. They did a style of dot painting that was called x-ray style, so they kind of showed the insides of their animals that were important to them, especially the ones they use for food. And all of that is just, that is so neat. It's a great way of learning about art. My first part of my project is done. Now I need to do my background. So I'm gonna flip and I just go around the remaining part of my page. And I would just continue doing this until I was completely done. Still need to finish my outside. I could do this with watercolors too if you have watercolors instead of uh, tempera paint. Here's some other examples. This was done with um, colored pencil and with marker. Have a lot of fun. This is a great project to do. Aloha.